Good morning. Today we are entering into sixth week of this course. So far, we have discussed about various soft skills. So our primary domain of this particular course is soft skills for business negotiation and marketing strategies. But interestingly, today onwards, I will be discussing everything with some bit of tips, tricks, do's and don'ts and my personal experience, experiences of others borrowed, experiences or cases learned through various research papers and books. So pay attention to me when I will be explaining this. You will certainly pay attention to the writings, but repeatedly you should be running this to get the points which I am going to highlight this way. So today's course starts with week 6. The topic is communications, verbal and non-verbal. Very interestingly, you know, the entire success or failure of every individual depends greatly on this skill, communication skill. It is for this reason, this communication skills part, I kept it at the end, so that all other skills which you can imbibe, you can practice, you can learn, you can also exercise on field, but communication skill, I thought that I should be stressing more and more. The benefits of this will go to such people who are either very busy in negotiations every day or going for first time negotiation or going for an interview with a celebrity, going for an interview with clients, more importantly the students. Students who are going to go for interviews which will be followed by group discussions and then there will be sometime maybe some bit of enactments. I remember one of the international companies who came to our institute, they took the interview in three cycles. First they have scrutinized all those credentials and ultimately boiled down to a certain number. Then they sat with the candidates for personal interview, shortlisted from there. After that they went into group discussions with those shortlisted candidates. After that they had given them a play, a drama to be enacted. They gave them a theme, they made the entire groups split into four, gave each one of them a theme and said take 15 minutes. This is your team, team of four or five that they had made I do not remember, but they said okay this is your team, 15 minutes time this is your theme. Prepare a play, rehearse it and come to us and present in front of everybody. From then they made a final selection. I had a very detailed discussion with the HR chief. I said okay, I understand the shortlisting by scrutiny. I understand the shortlisting by personal interview, one to one or maybe one to many. You are many, candidate is one. And then the group discussions. But what is the meaning of that particular enacting a drama, a play which you have given? The HR said a very interesting thing. He said look, we are selecting people who are going to represent us henceforth till his retirement or maybe beyond. We should not make any mistakes in understanding or identifying a real talent who are going to be the real assets of our company. Individual interview or personal interview is based on questions, some set questions and the question generated from the answers and the students or candidates answering, fine. Group discussion gives us an idea to view from a little distance that how are they interacting with others. Do they have the leadership skill? Do they have a logic in whatever points they are saying? Do they have a continuity of the thoughts? All these we watch from a distance. Still we would like to see whether the candidate has a creativity, innovations, any time on any situations whether they can do well or they can handle the situations for which suddenly they have been given a theme. That means it is an instant decision of a theme. And the next is 
They are given only 50 minutes time as if it is a boardroom within which all the board of directors are supposed to take a decision within 15 minutes on that theme and then they have to act the way they, they should be performing. So, you would like to see them from a distance the how are they performing. Once they perform, we make a judgment. That judgment is also not foolproof. So, what they did is after that, the next day morning, the shortlisted candidates were invited, further shortlisted candidates were invited to the field and they said, let us play games. There they have found out how people communicate with others, how they share and care for others. How do they, how do they you know pass, you know there was a football game that they had planned that how do they pass a ball to another, the opportunities. You remember I said that somebody who never gives a pass to anybody and tries to put a ball in the goal. This kind of things is sometime counterproductive for a company when there is a group work. So, they had done all these things. So, now everything is checked with respect to the communication. How do they communicate? You know, in fact, the communication skills of a person for any kind of such negotiations or business or marketing or whatever has multiple segments. One is networking, another is writing. How do you write the, or shoot a first letter to somebody whom you do not know or you have not seen? So, it is a written communication. Then there is another which is verbal communication. How do you talk? And then there is one very, very critical one is non-verbal communication. You have not spoken a single word, but you made a lot of you know gestures and postures and movements of you know hands and everything by which you have communicated to them many things. Necessary for this because written communication is again not a very soft skill, it is a hard skill. You have to learn the language, you have to learn the language, you have to learn the grammar, then you have to know how to write something how to express something. So, it is a kind of hard skill. So, I will not go into that, maybe some other time if, if you require. But at this moment, I will be talking about the verbal communication and non-verbal communication. In that, I will first talk about something about communication skills sets. In the soft skill communication skill sets, we have again, this will come in a alphabetical order. So, you do not think that this is the most important one, no, it is coming in alphabetical order. Body language is one of the strong element of non-verbal communication. What is this body language? You know, we cannot remain static anywhere and everywhere. Somehow or the other, we are living organisms. So, something will be moving, hands, bodies, torsos, heads, hairs nostrils, lips, eyes, everything will be mobile, you know, they will be active. And now what happens is when you are manifesting or acting, your body speaks something or communicates something to the person who is looking at you. It may be that you are not really communicating with that person or that person does not have any intention to communicate with you, but in the body language what happens is even if you do not want, if you look at somebody, then his or her body language will communicate something to you, whether you like it or dislike it, but the communication will be made. Once this communication is made, then automatically your mind that your power of intellection quickly jumps into a process in which they make a judgment. Somebody is, you know, you went to a hospital, you are waiting in the lobby and then you found that somebody is, you know, rushing around with tense face. And this just after him, you find one person he is looking, you know, he is moving around with a smiling face. Nobody is talking to you, neither they have any intention to talk to you nor you are talking to them, but immediately their body language will communicate to you in your mind, okay, this person is stressed, somebody in the hospital must be not well, this person must be under trouble and the other person probably got his patient treated, now he is happily going back because nobody enters the hospital with a smiling and laughing stages, nobody. Because they come to the hospital or emergency when they, they are under stress, either he himself is a sick person or he is bringing somebody or is caught a sick person. So, if somebody enters a hospital with a smiling face, then you first your reaction is this person is not the patient or this person is now coming to collect the patient who has been recovered. But if you find somebody coming with a tense face, you know, very, very dynamic and tense face, 
a lot of you know, uh, kinesthetic movements are there, you should be able to judge that he is under trouble. Then you must, might find that immediately after yeah, a stretcher is entering with a patient. So you have your judgment, nobody talked to you, nobody told you, nobody even advised you to look at, automatically the body language communicated something to you. I'll tell you this is one of the most risky stuff in our life. You know what happens is, we think that we communicate with people whom I want to communicate with or the person who wants to communicate with me. Unfortunately, what happens is your every movement is communicating something or the other. If there is somebody watching you, then automatically communicated. So whether it is voluntary or involuntary, communication is already done. So body language is very, very essential and one of the strongest soft skill, one of the strongest, not the, okay. I will go into this detail when I will talk about interviews, GDs, negotiations and such things where what kind of body language will communicate what that will come to know and what you should not do, one of your gestures or one of your posture, one of your hand movement, one of your eye movement might communicate something which is contrary to what you really meant. It is sometimes you know what happens is you wanted to say something but you said something and suppose your what you said verbally is not the right thing then probably you will be apologetic saying I didn't really mean this. That means you communicated with words, but it reached the listener and the judgment is or result is negative. So similar thing will happen in the body language. I will tell you friends, body language, however best possible you try, you try to emulate the good body languages. I will go into the detail of this, okay, after. First let me talk about the skill sets. Another communication skill is business communication. See, writing a letter to your parents or to your friend or to your cousins or to your brother or sister or siblings, you know, it's not same. But the thing is, writing business communication is a different kind of ball games. Here, the intention is different. The earlier cases, your intention is to communicate how to, en to inquire about how are they or to let them know that how are you at this moment. But in the business communication, your objective is always to gain, gain something, either gain a business or gain some money or gain some opportunities, gain some contacts, always something to gain. Look at the other side, the person whom you are communicating, he would also look at this communication as a gain to himself. Okay. These discussions may come later, but okay, business communication is one of the very strong communication skills, soft skills. Not everybody, see here a person with a good English language or command over English language or other languages does not necessarily mean that they will be writing very good business letter, no. Business letter has certain, you know, certain decorum, certain scale, certain size, certain language, language of writing, language of communication, okay. Then comes conversation. Conversation comes very strongly for verbal communication and body language comes in non-verbal communication. That means you are not saying anything. Everything is through this. You remember, have you must have seen pantomimes, the person who does pantomimes. In the pantomime, the person makes all kind of gestures, not a single word spoken and he is communicating exactly the situation that he is trying to enact. That is through body language. You just make a pantomime stand there and hold him, he cannot move, do nothing, nothing will be communicated. The greatest pantomime held hands, held legs tied and static, no communications. So the body language is that, that means non-verbal, you don't have to speak a single word. And conversation is verbal communication, that means you are now talking and conversation is always mutual, that means you are conversing with somebody else. You don't converse with yourself, I said earlier. You don't converse with yourself, you converse with somebody else, okay. And every time there is a generation of conversation or sometimes there is a blockage of conversation, I will come into this detail. See the thing is what I am doing now is I am just introducing to the tips of this. Moment I will come to these in detail, there will be lots of other points which will open up. Contesting opposition is another communication skill. What is this contesting opposition? You made a point to your friend. The friend objects, he says, no, I don't agree with you. You made a point to your client, client objects and refuses, I don't agree with you. 
client makes a proposition, you are now objecting or refusing. So, whenever there is a you know opposition comes, I said that if suppose there is a null or negative answer coming or negative results coming, then the negotiation starts. Contesting opposition is whenever you are being opposed, then how do you contest it? How do you put your points forward to prove that what you are saying is right? Sometime contesting opposition may be negative. Why? Because the opposition that is coming forward to your points, that may be the right point. But here I would say that is also a very good communication skill when you say you are contesting the opposition saying that I agree with you, but there are many other points. That means, you made him happy, made him comfortable that there are agreements. Okay? So, contesting opposition is another. Graphical expression is another. See, how many ways we are communicating? How do you sketch? Quickly you sketch. I will just give an idea on my white piece of paper. Can I? Just see. Because I am a cartoonist by hobby. I will just draw. Graphical expression. You have to give you have to understand what I am drawing. The moment I show you these two pictures, graphical expression, I do not need to tell you that this person is bald and this person has long hairs. I do not have to tell you that this person is happy and the other person is unhappy. I do not have to really tell you that this person is unkept and this person is even if bald, well kept. Very simple way of saying it, very simple way. You know what happens in the profession, what will happen? This is just I am saying with respect to comics or cartoons. What happens, do you know? That whenever you are communicating, sometime you will find that your client is not being able to understand your written expression or your verbal expression or the body language. In such cases, the only way that you can communicate to him is through graphic expression. We, the architects, are very strong in this. The artists are very strong in this. Engineers are very strong in this. Doctors are also very strong in this. I have seen doctors whenever doctor is trying to explain the exact scenario what has happened to the patient's body parts which is now under treatment, immediately he drew a sketch. And the moment he drew a sketch, the person immediately got communicated, yes, I understand what really has gone wrong or what has happened and how would it improve. The point is graphic expression, graphical expression is another very strong soft skill. For this, Okay, I'll I'll give a summary suggestion, summary advice to all of you after I finish this set. Another very strong communication skill is the humor. That means you are communicating with humor. You are making the other person comfortable through humor. But when I'll talk about the verbal communication and then I will highlight this humor, I'll put a certain no do's and don'ts in that. But however, I can always tell you that nobody wants to communicate with others who is stern, rigid. Everybody wants to speak to somebody or converse with somebody who is soft, accommodative, adaptive, affirmative. You know, there are so many things by which we communicate, you know, or we get results. So, when we talk about this and then another communication skill is interviewing. In the interviewing, very interestingly, it is a very good communication skill. Not everybody becomes good interviewer. The reason is, there is a purpose of interview, there is a status of interview. I am not talking about the interviews which are on the road like say you pick up a microphone and then catch hold of anybody randomly and then ta start taking their feedbacks. That is not the interview I am talking about, but that is also one of the strong interview. I have seen that for our surveys when we send our students to for survey, field survey for our planning and other exercises I have found that some students come back with very good responses. Some students say sir actually they were not responding they were not opening it up. They'd, I asked this question, but they never re responded. See the thing is, it is all an art of interviewing. How did you interview? How did you open your question? How did you catch hold of him? How did you make him stop? He is in a movement. You stop him. Then you tell him your objective of this particular interview and then you ask him few questions. How many questions have you asked? 
how lengthy was your questionnaire, how long was each question and what was your reactions to the affirmative or negative responses. All these are strong skills during interview. I am not talking about those people who interview with lots of background research on the topic and the celebrity whom the person is interviewing and in the process what happens is before the celebrity opens his mouth, this person start answering the thing. I understand, I understand what you want to say is this, 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 this. This I will give a good enactment afterwards. So the thing is basically when you are interviewing somebody, it's communication skill, how best you could communicate your points or questions to him, how clear, how discreet, how brief, how to the point so that he can respond. Okay? Now then let me give some summary suggestions at this advice at this point and then again I will go, go forward. Whenever you are trying to move in your profession or in your life, my suggestion is try to learn graphic expression right from the childhood days. If you recall in my initial discussions, maybe first or second lecture I do not recall in which I said every salesperson must have some exposure to dramatics. If you recall, I said that. I said that if you are selling, then you must also know how to act. I am not saying that you are faking or you are mocking or you are enacting something which is untrue. I am not saying that. Acting or dramatic skill through rehearsal makes you trained about how to present your case in front of a large audience and then you are pushed into the stage with all spotlights on and you are alone and now you are speaking to the audience and how best what you have rehearsed, how best you can communicate to them. So if you learn that then while selling you will make a background preparation at your office or at your home and then when you go and actually meet the client then that is a stage and your audience is either one client or many clients sitting together. You are only one actor. In a play there may be more than one actor. I am not saying mono, mono plays, you know, mono acting plays. I am talking about say two, three persons with your group who are also acting at that point of time and then some points raised which are unpalatable to the clients. How do you tackle it? You know, all these things you learn through the dramatic exercise. Now then if anyone, any person who has enrolled for this particular course belongs to the younger group of the school going children, then I have a very strong suggestion. Suggestion is if you have not been doing this till now, please from tomorrow onwards join a dramatics club. Practice debates, practice elocutions and practice arts, graphics expression. If you do these four, you will find that when you are interacting with people, it is just a cakewalk, cakewalk. You don't, have expert, you don't have to be expert orator, you don't have to be a good artist. You only know that how you can communicate well. Okay? It is for those who are now in the school going stage. But those who are now in the college, you have not practiced this in your school time because you are too busy with in your school preparations, school study preparations. But now it is a time, join the clubs of your institute, cultural clubs, dramatics club, any clubs such clubs, photography club, painting clubs or fine arts club join and then practice. Never think that any time is late. That means you do not think since I did not do in my school days, I cannot do it now because I am quite old now. Join. For people who have crossed their college life, now gone to the profession, is now hunting around for jobs or maybe doing business or whatever, join a dramatics club. If possible, spend some time, two hours every Sunday in a graphics expression institute. That means a fine arts school or such art schools or join somewhere where you can speak well. There is nothing called too late for learning anything. So my suggestion, take it very seriously and then try to follow. The other points which are coming now is language. This language is, I am not talking about the language in which language you are talking in. No, it is not like English, German, French, Hindi and other regional languages. I am not talking about that language. It is a language means the kind of words that you use, the way you speak. <coughs> that is what is language. That means how do you speak? The way of speaking, that is language. 
Are you using formal language? Are you using informal language? Are you using language with wits and humor? Are you using language with too much of informal word? Are you using language with acronyms? Are you using language with code names or code words? This is what is the language part I'm, I'm hinting at. So communication skill with the language is important. This skill, my God, this is one of the strongest skill, but very rarely available. Listening. In this world, nobody is ready to listen. Everybody wants to speak. Everybody wants to share. Everybody wants to share their experience. Nobody has time to listen. This is one skill is very, very, very important. If conversation skill is strong, then listening skill is also strong. In the listening skill, unfortunately, in conversation you are speaking and during listening you are closing your lips and your mouth and listen, using these ears. And if you are listening, then when you are communicating, this question I have heard from many. My students have asked, sir, I am listening. What is great in that? I am not communicating. I said, by listening, you are communicating. That means you, are, you remember, you know, there's a something called lend your ears. Lend your ears means what? You are being communicated with. Somebody wants to communicate something to you through his words, through his verbal, verbal skills. You have to now get it, imbibe it, think over it. Even if you are not saying anything, keep quiet, but still you are communicating. So in the communication skill, in fact, as I said, I'm repeating, in this world, nobody is ready to listen. Everybody is ready to speak, okay? Listening skill, how do you listen? How do you react? I will elaborate later. I'm just introducing these words to you. Physical communication, this physical communication is basically, you know, how do you embrace somebody? How do you shake your hands? T by touching, by patting at the back, by putting a hand on the shoulder, by putting a hand on the forehead, somebody's blessings, you know, communicating. When you go and touch the feet of your grandfather, he touches your top of the head. Basically, what did he do? He gave you a blessing. You thought it's a blessing. Basically, he communicated by touch. Touch matters a lot. When you are in grief, you'll find that you fall back while crying. You fall back on somebody else's shoulder, basically, or somebody else's chest. Basically, what you're doing, you're physically communicating. You are seeking a support. So physical communication is important, but physical communication has to be done very, very judiciously, very judiciously. I don't need to elaborate. Not, if it is not really necessary, don't touch others. If it is not necessary. If you are not authorized, don't touch others. In your protocols, it is not necessary that if you have met somebody and you want to welcome him, you have to go and immediately hug him. No. For God's sake, don't do that. You do it only when it calls for as an ultimate one. That means such kind of physical communication is important. That means you are now touching. Also by gestures. If somebody you see, you, you know, wave your hand. Or you, you know, look at the person, give a smile. And, or raise your eyebrows with a smile. These are all, you know, physically you are communicating. But that also comes under body language. Okay. Picking up leads and threads is another communication skill. What is the leads and threads? Leads and threads are basically information received from somebody either voluntarily or involuntarily. That's a lead or thread. For business, it is very important. Quite often, we, are sh you know, we don't feel hesitant to ask somebody, can you please give me a lead? Do you know that particular person? who is potential for my business. You don't have any business with him, but you know him. You know him. Can you give me a lead? Lead means the connectivities through which you can be contacted. How to pick up leads? How to pick up threads? Threads means basically linking. How do you do it? It's another very strong communication skill in which, you know, basically what happens is you pick up from your friends, from your clients, from your partners, maybe from your enemies or opponents or competitors. You just catch up a lead and that lead when you take, then ultimately you put them together, in, you know, make two plus two is equal to four. And then you proceed with your marketing skills to reach 
the clients or the objects or the targets or the opportunities. So this is another very strong communication skill. Picking up lead, if I'm saying is right, then giving lead is also a good communication skill. Nothing is possible if you only expect to gain and never give. So this is also important. Presence of mind is how do you react or act given a situation which was not or rather unforeseen, uncertain. That's a presence of mind. You have suddenly came into a situation, something happened and you have to take a decision right away. You don't have any time, neither it is required that you have to take you know, permission from your superiors. Right at that point, what you should do is a presence of mind. And that presence of mind, and that presence of mind is one of the strong assets of some people. And some people who have this presence of mind are quite respected and regarded in the company, in the organization. Because it is, they have, you know, very peculiar speciality of doing something right at the point when it is required to be done something. That means, you know, something like doing the right things in the right time in the right place. We say that I got the opportunity because I was there, I was at the right point at the right time. So doing the right thing at the right time, at the right place, it calls for presence of mind. Otherwise, everything is in our sales and marketing and business negotiation, everything is almost rehearsed and blocked out. Always in a team of negotiations or even in the sales, you've got to have some people who have very strong presence of mind. Not that every time it will work, but the thing is most often they do work because you know they somehow get used to solving problems when there is a or you know taking a decision when there is a necessity of it. Presentation skill is another. Now look, verbal communication skill, I said, graphical skill, I said, body language, I said, but presentation skill is all together, all bundled together and having a high impact. That means you must have the presentation skills that how you present the whole case. I'm not talking about the presentation means that you go to, you know, go with a laptop or iPad and ultimately connect it with the LCD projector and use the pictures. I'm not saying that. Presentation is your objective is well presented, whether through your media or through your words, through your gestures, through your scribbles, through your sketches. High, it should have high impact. That means presentation skills with high impact skills, you know, high impact presentation skills if I say it's very, very strong communication skill. Prompt wits. It's always seen that most of the successful people are also witty. And the wits, not that every time they are reflecting or expressing their wit or you know, demonstrating their wits. No, it's not. But wherever required, they are very prompt in it. That means the wits are very well reflected very promptly. Wits never comes back after some time, that means there is no lag. You want to say something with your intelligent analysis, of which is in split second, and then you take 10 minutes to give that, it will never work. That's why it's prompt. It has to be, the wits has to be instant. And now, wits and humor quite often are, you know, they are confused with or thought uh, synonymously. Actually, wits is also the kind of presence of mind which gives you a skill to say something, express something. Okay? That means a very sharp person, very intelligent person, quickly thinking, very strong, with strong intellect power, then very quickly thinking about something and then giving an answer. It is a combination of many things like presence of mind, wits, and sometimes humor blended with it, it works miracles. That means if suppose a deal is done, then you don't start jumping, but you end the deal with a, a little bit of witty or humorous renditions. You simply don't say with a stern face, okay, gentlemen, so we have, we are agreed to it, now let's, uh, let's go back, thank you very much. No, you say something, make friends, you know, that's how it goes. And public speaking altogether, that means how do you speak to others? Public speaking I've already talked about when I was talking about people's skill or social skill. At that point of time, I talked about this. Okay? So, so far, up to this much I have discussed, I'll go farther forward. So, some of the other communication skills which I'll first elaborate and after that, I'll straightway go into how shall I groom you for your 
overall communication skills with the help of soft skills. So please wait for it. Till now, whatever you have gone through, reread, reread it. Wherever there is any confusion, it's, I don't expect that you have to ask a questions to know something different. No, I expect that you'll be asking through in the forum some clarifications, something more. If you have some doubts, get that clarified. So asking question is almost giving an idea that you don't know the answer. See, I'm drawing all these examples from our life, from my own experience, others' experience. So I expect you also have your life and you are experiencing all these things, but you may have some doubts. Some more clarity will be required. So please feel free to write in the forum, not as a question, but seeking clarifications. I'll be very happy to give you all responses to this so that my points are best hit and goes to the right mindset what we are intending. Is that okay? Thank you very much.